Hello, everyone. My name is Niklas Hansen, and I am head of application engineering at NILT Technology. I'm based in Gothenburg, Sweden, and joined NILT back in 2012. And I'm working with diffractive optics, meta optics, and micro lens arrays, trying to find the be best solutions for, for the customers. Today, I'll talk about the company NILT Technology an introduction to flat optics and how we use flat optics to make miniaturized cameras for the near infrared and swear band and also how we make, how we use the flat optics to make miniaturized illuminators for the near and swear band i'll talk about the applications and how we manufacture these optics so nil technology um, was founded back in 2006. We have our headquarters in Copenhagen, Denmark. I'm sitting in the Goth office in Gothenburg, Sweden. We also have an engineering site in Switzerland and an office on the East Coast in the US. And we're making optical components such as diffusers, fan outs, collimators and focusing lenses. And we also stack these together then we're making masters and prototype replications to make diffractive planar waveguides for the AR and VR industry. Today, I'm going to talk about flat optics, such as diffractive optics, meta optics, and micro lens arrays. And what I find interesting about these is that when you're trying to make diffusers or fan outs or collimators, all of these can be designed with either a DOE, a MOE, or an MLA. And which technology that is the best, that really depends on the application and the optical specifications. And what NILT is doing, um, since we're working with all three methods, we're basically building up a unique understanding of when to apply which technology. So here you can see a schematic of how we're using flat optics to build a camera. It's an extremely simple system. You have the image sensor and you have a flat focusing lens. Here we're using diffractive optics or meta optics. And since it's such an, a simple system, you also have a simple integration and you also have fewer lenses than you would have in a refractive system. If we're looking at the optical performance, um, if we would use a meta optic as a flat element, then there are a few things I would like to highlight. So with meta lenses, you can address an extremely high field of view, basically replacing um, fisheye lenses, bulky fisheye lenses with a flat meta lens. You can also design for very low F numbers, which means you get a high light throughput. You can also reach a very high relative illumination, 100% in design, which is impossible with a refractive system. You can also control the polarization if you're using a meta optic. The efficiency of the meta lens depends on how precisely you can manufacture the, these, um, the pillars in the meta optic. And this is why we're using electron beam lithography uh, to make masters and replicate with nano imprint, because we believe this is the best way of reaching the tightest tolerances and thereby uh, reaching the highest efficiencies. We have a qualified mass production process based on nano imprint, and we're commissioning a line in 2022. For the illuminators, it's a similar concept, but here we have a Vixel as a source, and then a simple flat optic to either create a fan out or a flat diffuser or a variation. So again, such a simple system allows for an easy integration. On the optical performance, if we look at what we can achieve with a diffractive, diffractive optic, we can reach above 90% uniformity in a dot pattern. We can also, on the diffuser profile, uh, designed for uh, a large variation of intensity profiles. 
In the image below, you can see a bat wing where you have higher intensity in the corners. It's also worth noticing that there is no visible zero order in this image. And that is because we're able to suppress the zero order to below 0.1%. It is also sharp transitions in the intensity. You can go from 90% to 10% in less than one degree. On the application side, we are working with the mobile and the automotive. And on the mobile, we have the 3D sensing on the front side, the 3D sensing on the world facing side, and also distance sensors helping the camera to autofocus. And we have proximity sensors. For the automotive, we have the long range LiDAR, the short range LiDAR, and also monitoring of the driver. One unique thing at NILT is that we have everything from design to manufacturing in-house. We have a design team and we have both the prototyping and the MP process in-house with the mastering, replication and dicing. We have mechanical inspection and optical testing in-house, both for prototyping and for mass production. So a typical loop going from design building the part, analyzing and taking corrective actions can be as fast as, as uh, two to six weeks. And this allows for a quick path to mass production. As I said pre earlier, we are using electron beam lithography in order to make masters. And that is because we believe that is the only way to achieve the highest resolution. We're making fully populated masters and therefore it's important to have a high uniformity when you when you etch um, complete masters. We're characterizing in AFM and SEM and also doing functional testing in-house. So we put a lot of efforts into controlling the, uh, the structures, the nanostructures, both in the master and uh, all the way from the center to the edge of the master and also throughout the replication process, making sure that we maintain a high fidelity of the structures. And one way of seeing whether you succeed with having a high uh, control of the structures is to look at the zero order, because all the deviations, both in the master and in the replication process will lead to increased zero order. So what you, the graph you see here is a lot of devices measured on across a fully populated master and zero order is measured for each device and we can see that all devices have a zero order below 0.08 percent and what, what that means is basically that we have a very high quality manufacturing process thank you for listening